Hey everyone, welcome to the first lecture on rotational spectroscopy. And when we finished off last week, we talked about the rotational world uh, versus the linear world. And so we know a bunch of equations in the linear world. For instance, we know that kinetic energy of an object is one half the mass times the square of the velocity. We can also rewrite that as the mass times the velocity all squared over 2m and uh, we recognize that that top term is the linear momentum in a particular direction so that's squared all over 2m and that's just totally fine we really don't need to uh, change to the rotational world apart from the fact that all the equations are way way easier and so in the rotational world we can go ahead and say the kinetic energy is one half the equivalent of mass and so in the rotational world we replace mass with moment of inertia so that's I and in the rotational world we replace velocity with angular velocity and so angular velocity is omega and squared and so we can look at that and we can rewrite that that is I omega all squared over 2I and if we remember from our physics, I omega, the, that's uh, the moment of inertia times the rotational velocity, is equal to the angular momentum. And so we can call that J. I guess it's one of those special vectors, so we should probably put an arrow over it, although sometimes we'll forget the arrow. So it's J squared over 2I. And we can see the correspondence with what we have above. So in linear motion, right, we've got the kinetic energy is P squared, linear momentum over uh, twice the mass. In the rotational world we've got it equal to the angular momentum squared over twice the sort of the rotational equivalent of mass and that is the uh, moment of inertia. So we can see those equations correspond pretty nicely. And here's where quantum mechanics comes in because quantum me mechanics tells us that J itself is quantized and so J can't actually take any number you like and so we know that J squared is equal to confusingly enough a quantum number times by that quantum number plus one times by h bar squared and uh, that quantum number j is the rotational quantum number or rotational qn for short and it takes values from zero to infinity in steps of one so we can go ahead and we can substitute in so for the rotational world right kinetic energy is j squared over 2i well, now we've got an equation for j squared, right? So we can take uh, j squared is equal to j, j plus 1, h bar squared, okay? All divided by 2i. And uh, we can go ahead and we can collect some terms here. We can look at the constant part. So we can say that's uh, h bar squared over 2i. And then we can look at the, uh, the variable part, right? So that's the quantum number j times by itself plus 1. And if we're smart, we can go ahead and we can take all this mess here and we can say let's that be equal to a new constant so uh, we've got a constant b that is the rotational constant so since we're dealing with rotations a rotational constant seems like a pretty smart thing to call this and so we can rewrite this so the kinetic energy then is b times by that quantum number j times by itself plus one and that is the kinetic energy and uh, if we actually have uh, no potential energy, so you can think of this thing as rotating, and when it rotates, right, its uh, angle uh, does not seem to affect the uh, energy, so it has no potential energy, so V is zero. Then we can say the kinetic energy is just actually the same as the total energy. And so that allows us to write, if you like, the total energy for a rotating molecule, okay, depends on the quantum number J, and it's equal to this rotational constant b times by this rotational quantum number times by itself plus one so there you go we can go ahead and draw an energy diagram for this so we know that e depends on j is equal to b times by j times by j plus one and so we can go ahead and we can plot a diagram here so uh here we go uh here is energy and uh, we're going to go ahead and take the lowest value of j. So that would be j equals 0. And we can see when we pick j equals 0 in here, all this stuff disappears. And so uh, it's a big fat 0. 0 times by anything is 0. So we know that that has 0 energy. So we have no 0 point energy for the uh, quantum mechanical rotator. 
And as we go up to higher and higher quantum numbers, right, we got j equals 1. And so if we take uh, 1 times by uh, 1 plus 1, so that's 1 times by 2, so that is 2b worth of energy. And we can go ahead and we can take the next step here and say that's got an energy of 2b. And what's interesting about this is as we go to higher and higher quantum numbers, the energy gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So when we pick j equals 2, and we go ahead and we multiply 2 by 3, we get 6 lots of b. And so now, instead of increasing by a constant amount, like we saw for the uh, simple harmonic oscillator, the vibrational uh, system, it actually keeps going up and up and up by a larger amount. So uh, if we go to one more, maybe, so j equals 3, and we go ahead and we calculate 3 times by 4, that is 12 times by b. And so we can see that this is actually pretty high up there in energy. Um, so 12b is right about here. And uh, we can go ahead and we can plot an energy level that looks something like that. So this energy gap uh, between the adjacent levels is getting bigger and bigger. So it's only a small one for the 0 to 1 transition. Going from 1 to 2, it is much bigger, right? So this is 2b. This is 4b. And going up here, this is 6b. And the next one actually is 8b if you're keeping track. Wait a minute. I think we forgot something. We forgot the uh, magnetic quantum number earlier, didn't we? So uh, we've been talking about j, and we've said j can take values from 0 to infinity. And uh, there is another quantum number, though, mj. And mj tells us the, um, the z component of the angular momentum. And uh, it doesn't affect the energy unless you're in a magnetic field. But of course, there are states that are described with both j and m sub j quantum numbers. So we got to take that into account. Just as a reminder, m sub j takes values from minus j to plus j. So uh, in steps of 1, okay, so this is one way to write it. Or if you want to get fancy, you can say it's 0, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, dot, 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 uh, plus or minus j. So for instance, if you had uh, j equals 2, then you would have mj values from minus 2 to plus 2. And in fact, we can see that there are five different values of m sub j. So when we go back to our energy diagram, we really should probably include this information, right? So uh, here's our energy. And uh, we don't have any zero point energy, so the lowest state is zero. And uh, that is probably kosher. So uh, that corresponds to j equals zero. And if j equals zero, there's only one value of m sub j, so that is zero. But as we go on up and we look at the next one, Okay, j is 1. m sub j, though, can take three values. It can go from minus 1 to plus 1. So we actually draw not one individual state, but three states here with the same energy. Sometimes we refer to this as a level versus a state. So um, I'm going to go ahead and scribble in lime green. And so this re represents a single level. So uh, we are in, I guess, the second level here. And inside of this level, there are actually three states. So there are three different sets of quantum numbers that describe this. So sometimes we kind of use levels and states interchangeably. That's really uh, kind of naughty, though, actually. So uh, this one here had an energy, I believe, of 2b. And so as we go up to the next one, so uh, that'll give us j equals 2. And sub j then can be minus 2, minus 1, 0 plus 1 or plus 2, so that is a total of 5 states in that level. We saw earlier that if j is 2, this has a value and energy. Uh, let me go ahead and write this in the top right hand corner. So that is b times by j, j plus 1. So if j is 2, then 2 times by 3 is 6, so that would have an energy of 6b. Okay, we've got our 5 states in that third level with uh, that energy and so uh, there we go let's go ahead and decorate this so j is 2 and m sub j takes values from oh let's just write them over top minus 2 minus 1 0 plus 1 plus 2 and this should remind you of the uh, atomic orbitals in a hydrogen atom so uh, you remember right that uh, you get progressively more and more so there's one s orbital in the s subshell but there's three p orbitals in the p subshell 5d and uh, 7f and so on 
So uh, here we go. So j equals 3. That would give rise to uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, going all the way from minus 3 to plus 3. So I'll just go ahead and dot, 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 dot those guys. And um, we can see that there are progressively more and more states as we go up the levels. This is actually getting to be kind of annoying. And uh, so we normally go ahead and talk about the degeneracies. And uh, the degeneracy is the number of states with exactly the same energy. We normally use the symbol G, lowercase g for degeneracy. I'm not sure why. Maybe you can tell me. And because the degeneracy depends upon the quantum number J for our rotational system here, we're going to go ahead and decorate this. So G sub J, which is a bit of a tongue twister. And you can probably see here that this degeneracy is given by the expression 2j plus 1. So when j is 0, the degeneracy is twice 0 plus 1. So that's just 1. So there's one state there. When j is 1, 2 times 1 plus 1 is 3. So there's our 3. When j is 2, our degeneracy is double that plus 1. So that's 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. When j is 3, double 3 plus 1 is 7. There's seven states there that have exactly the same energy. So there's seven states in that level. That level, we forgot to write, well, I forgot to write the energy on the side, so that's 12b. And uh, so we can see the degeneracy equation gives us a really nice way to keep track of this information.